Hey guys, I'm Rebecca from yarnandchai.com and I'm going to teach you how to crochet the Anya cowl and the Anya infinity scarf. I'm going to be crocheting a small swatch of the pattern, but on the left side of your screen, you'll see instructions for both the cowl and the infinity scarf. So whichever one you choose, you'll be able to follow along with me. This is an easy level pattern that uses all single crochet stitches in a unique way to achieve beautiful detailing. You're going to need two different yarns for this project. For color A, you'll need a number four air and weight yarn. A medium to dark color is best. I'm using Rustic Romantic by Yarn Bee. For the cowl, I used the colorway Red Roads, and for the scarf, I used Window Ivy. You'll need about 290 yards for the cowl, or 375 yards for the scarf. For color B, you'll need a thinner yarn in a contrasting color. You can use DK, Spore, even a thinner worsted yarn will work here. Just make sure it's a nice smooth yarn and has good contrast with your first yarn. Otherwise, the detailing won't be as prominent. I'm using Must Be Merino by Yarn Bee in white. You'll need about 135 yards for the cowl or 150 yards for the scarf. The recommended hook size for this pattern is a K or six and a half millimeter hook, but you should use whichever hook you need to achieve the gauge. With color A, 16 rows of 13 single crochet stitches would equal a four inch square. You're also going to need a yarn needle and three buttons at least one inch wide. Now the buttons on this pattern are purely decorative. They are not functional. They'll be sewn through both layers to hold the cowl or the scarf in place permanently. The finished size of the cowl is 40 inches long by nine inches tall before seaming. And the finished size of the scarf is 62 inches long by seven inches wide before seaming. There are no stitch multiples for this pattern, so if you're a more experienced crocheter and you want to make your scarf or your cowl bigger or smaller, or you want to use a completely different yarn weight, you can simply chain to the size you want and then complete the repeat as many times as you want. One last thing before we begin, please take a moment to read the video description. If there have been any changes or error corrections to this pattern since the publishing of this video, they'll be listed in the video description under pattern updates. Let's get started. So to begin with color A and your K hook, or whichever hook you're using, you're going to um, chain 129 for the buttoned cowl, or you're going to chain 205 for the infinity scarf. I am going to chain 21. Okay, for round one, we are going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in each remaining chain. So the loops on your hook do not count. This is the first chain. We're gonna single crochet into the second chain and I just go into the back loops for this project, it really does not matter if you go into the back loop or the back bump. So go ahead and single crochet in that second chain from your hook and in each remaining chain. For row two, you're going to chain one and turn your work. And I should mention, your stitch counts are going to remain the same throughout this entire project. So for those of you who are making the buttoned cowl, your stitch count at the end of each row should be 128. If you're making the infinity scarf, your stitch count at the end of every row will be 204. And of course, my stitch count is just going to be 20 because I'm just making a swatch. So for row two, we chained one and turned, and we are again going to single crochet in each stitch across. Now when you're done with row two, you're going to pull up a large loop, probably three, four inches tall, and then you're going to remove your hook. And the reason we pulled up this loop is because we don't want this yarn to unravel, so you're gonna to have to be careful with that. And if you're worried, you can always um, stick a stitch marker or a bobby pin in here and then if it gets pulled like this as you're working with your uh, color B, it won't slip through as long as you have something hooked there. Okay, so pull up your loop and remove your hook and this is where it gets way more fun. So for row three, we're gonna bring in our 
color B here. I'm just going to set it next to my color A because I'm going to be going back and forth throughout the rest of the pattern. Okay, so for row three, without turning your work, so we still have our loop here where we removed our hook. Without turning your work, you're gonna insert your hook into the first stitch of row two. So that's over here, the very first stitch that we made. And we're gonna go ahead and insert into the top loops of that very first stitch. And we're gonna attach color B. So bring it through there and chain one. And now we're going to single crochet in each stitch across. So we're going to go right back into those same loops because that chain one does not count as a stitch. Single crochet in each stitch across. Make sure you get into that very last one. Okay, at the end of row three, again, we're going to pull up a loop and remove our hook. And for row 4A, and I will explain in a moment why we're calling this 4A, because there is a 4B, we're going to reinsert our hook into the loop from color A. So this is the loop from color A. Make sure when you reinsert your hook and then you pull on the yarn, the part that moves coming towards you is the part that's closest to you. Um, the thread that's the closest to you should be the one that's moving down into the stitch. And that's how you know that you have inserted your hook into the loop the correct way. And we don't want to get it all twisted, so that's a good thing. Make sure that this doesn't unravel if you want to put a stitch marker in that. Again, that's fine. Okay, so we've inserted our hook into the loop from color A, and we're going to chain one and turn our work. This is where it gets a little bit messy because we have to keep all of these different yarns out of our way. So you're going to want to make sure at this point that color B is back out of the way. You don't want it in front, you want it in back. And what we're going to do, we chained one and turned, and we're going to single crochet into each stitch of row three. So we are single crocheting into the top loops of color B now. So there's the first one. And we're just going to go all the way across. And that loop from color A is just still dangling, or color B, I'm sorry, is still dangling there. We're just going to go ahead and single crochet all the way across. Okay, and at the end of row 4A, again, we're going to pull up our loop and remove the hook. Now for row 4B, we are going to turn our work and we're going to reinsert our hook into the loop from color B. Make sure you're inserting it the right way. And we're going to chain one and turn our work. And now we're going to single crochet spike stitch in each stitch across. So let me show you nice and up close here what I mean by a single crochet spike stitch. And you kind of have to work with it a little bit in the very beginning because this um, tends to fold over and you have to make sure that you're getting into that first stitch. So the very first stitch, the top loops are right here, okay? So instead of inserting my hook into the top loops, I am going to go a little farther down and insert it into this little hole here at the bottom of the stitch. I'm going to go ahead and do this first one really quick and then I'm going to show you again on the second stitch because it is so much easier to see what I'm talking about. Okay, so these are the top loops of the next stitch and if you turn it, you can see where this V meets down at the bottom. It forms a little hole, especially if you pull it apart, you can see there's definitely a hole right there. So you're going to insert your hook there and complete a single crochet. And the reason that we are calling this row 4B instead of row 5 is because we are not really making it any taller, the piece as a whole. We're actually just crocheting right over row 4A. 
And so for the purposes of counting our rows, um, as this cowl or scarf gets bigger and bigger, it's just easier to do so if you consider these basically two parts of the same row. Okay, excuse that little transition there. I had quite a bit of yarn barf that I had to work through for a second. So always fun. All right, so go ahead and continue to single crochet spike stitch all the way down for the remainder of row 4B. When you get to the end here, make sure you get into that last stitch. And at the end of 4B, again, we're going to pull up our loop and remove our hook. For row 5, we're going to stay right where we're at and we're going to reinsert our hook into color A. We're going to chain 1, turn our work, and again, making sure that everything from color B is behind us so that we don't get twisted. We're going to single crochet into that first stitch. We're doing a regular single crochet now into the top loops. So single crochet, single crochet, and we're going to work all the way down to the end of the row. For row six, we're going to chain one and turn and single crochet in each stitch across. For a couple of rows now, we're going to take a break from using color B. Just put a nice little section of only color A. We are moving on to row seven now, and I wanted to point out um, that this is actually going to be the beginning of the repeat that we're going to be doing later on in the pattern. So um, if you need extra help when we get to that point, when I set you free on the repeats, this is the part that you're going to come back to to start because this is the first row of the repeat. The repeat is rows 7 through 11. Okay, so for row 7, we're just actually going to do the same thing we just did. We're going to chain one, turn our work, and single crochet all the way across. And at the end of row seven, we're going to pull up our loop and remove our hook. For row eight, we're going to turn our work, reinsert our hook into the loop from color B. Pull it down there. And because we have this big section that we have to jump, we're going to chain three to get up there. And then we're going to turn our work and we're going to single crochet in each stitch across. So these are the top loops from the very first stitch. We're going to single crochet into those and across. The end of row eight, pull up your loop, remove your hook. And for row nine, we're going to stay right where we're at, reinsert our hook into the loop from color A. We're going to chain one, turn our work, make sure we put all of that color B behind us. And then we're going to single crochet in each stitch across. Okay, we're going to pull up our loop, remove our hook. For row 9B, we're going to turn our work reinsert our hook into the loop from color B, making sure we're inserting the right way there, chain one, turn, and this is where we're going to single crochet spike stitch across. So I know that my first stitch is going to go right into that hole right there underneath the top loops from the first stitch, right there where that V meets and I'm just going to single crochet spike stitch all the way across. Remove your hook after pulling up a loop. Reinsert into the loop from color A, chain one, turn your work, get color B out of the way. That was uh, the beginning of row 10, sorry. Um, row 10 chain one and turn and then single crochet in each stitch across. 
and for row 11 we're going to stick with color A, chain 1, turn, single crochet in each stitch across. At the end of row 11, you're actually going to begin a series of repeats. Um, I removed my hook so that I could set this down for a moment, but you actually don't need to because for row 12, you're still going to be working with color A. Okay, so this is what we have so far. We've got this really pretty pattern on the right side of our work. If you are working the buttoned cowl for rows 12 through 41, you're going to repeat rows 7 through 11 six times. So that means row 7, 8, 9A, 9B, 10, and 11. You're going to go through that sequence six more times in addition to what you've already done. If you're making the infinity scarf for rows 12 through 31, you're going to repeat rows 7 through 11, same as the cowl, but you're only going to repeat it four more times in addition to what you've already done because the cowl is a lot wider than the scarf is. I'm going to put that up on the screen for you and you can either pause the video and use the written pattern to help you, or if you need to, you can rewind back to the beginning of row seven and just keep rewinding each time you need to um, start a new series of repeats. You can go back to row seven and start the video there if you need to watch every single time. Um, otherwise, you can just use this written pattern. When you are done, um, for the cowl, once you've gotten to row 41, and for the scarf, once you've gotten to row 31 and you've completed those, um, you're going to just do one final row of single crochet. So I'm going to pretend that I already did all of my repeats. And I just finished with a repeat of row 11, which is what um, you will have done whether you're doing the cowl or the scarf. And so for row uh, 42, if you're doing the cowl, or this would be only row 32 if you're doing the scarf, you're going to chain one and turn your work, and you're going to single crochet in each stitch across. And you're done. Pull up a loop. One quick tip for fastening off with color B. I've already cut the yarn here. Um, because this is a working loop here, if you were to just, um, and not even thinking about it, just grab this and pull it, you would actually unravel what you've done and that would be bad. There would be no way to fix that other than to go back and redo it again. So I just wanted to draw your attention to that. Instead of pulling on the tail end, you're going to want to pull on the loop part and pull that tail all the way through and that is what is going to secure you. Okay, so this is the end of my swatch and hopefully your pattern looks something like this. The next step is the fringe if you decide that you want to do fringe. So to do the fringe, you're just going to cut about 99 inch pieces of yarn. That's for the cowl. If you are doing fringe on the infinity scarf, you're actually going to want to cut about 160 pieces of 9 inch yarn. And then what you're going to do is um, you're going to lay out your project in front of you, whether it's the cowl or the scarf. Um, you're going to want the right side facing you. It doesn't matter if it's like this or it's like this. You can decide which part you want to be the bottom. You're going to start in one of the corners and you're just going to attach your fringe. Now I'm going to do mine with color B real quick to show you. Um, I actually used color A in my finished cowl, but I just want to show you really quick if you are not familiar with how to attach fringe, um, it'll be easier for you to see with the white. So all you're going to do is you're going to come from the back of your project with your hook and come up through the loops and then you're just going to pull the yarn through, bring up that loop, and then stick your fingers through it and grab the yarn and pull all the way through. And that's how you make a piece of fringe, okay? Quick lesson on fringe there. So what you're going to want to do um, to match the look of the fringe on the cowl that I made is you're actually going to want to pull three strands through at a time to get this thickness of tassels. Okay, so three strands and you're going to go every four stitches. So what I did is I attached a fringe and then I counted one, two, three, four, attach. 
one, two, three, four attached. And I did that all the way down the length of the cowl. Now I chose to not put fringe on the infinity scarf but I love fringe and I do think that it would be beautiful on it. So if you're putting fringe on your infinity scarf, same rules apply. Go every four stitches and use three pieces of yarn for each one. After that you're gonna take your buttons and you are going to use the buttons to fasten up the edges of your cowl or your scarf. I did not sew my ends together. As you can see, all I did is I used the buttons and when I sewed the buttons on with a piece of yarn, I went through both layers of the cowl. This is the cowl for example. Scarf would be the same thing though. I went through both layers and attached the buttons and so that is how the cowl is held together. So for the cowl, you're gonna want to lay it out with the wrong side of the work facing up and then you're going to want to bring the ends down in a triangular motion laying them really nicely one on top of the other so that the edges line up and then you attach your buttons one in each corner and then one in the center now for the cowl I also added a little piece of yarn in the corner to make sure that the uh, the bottom part of the bottom layer the this loose corner here didn't just go all crazy I wanted it to stay in place so I did add a little um, just kind of a I just used a yarn needle um, put some yarn through both layers tied a couple of knots cut it off um, totally not noticeable but it does make a big difference in how the cowl lays for the infinity scarf you're going to want to lay it out with the again the wrong side facing up and then you're going to bring the ends together and just lay them one over the top of the other um, straight and overlapping about an inch and then you're going to lay out your buttons and sew them through both layers to hold that scarf together as well. You can find the complete written pattern on my blog at yarnandshy.com slash anya-cowl or anya-infinity-scarf. And of course, you can follow me online at yarnandshy.design for Facebook and Instagram, and yarnandshy on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.